Hello, this is James Wood, the NACIF Scholastic Tournament Administrator. I want to make this video a little bit different than the other ones that I've been making because the NACIF Fall California Open is going to be a little bit different for formatting than the CIF League for Smash Brothers. This video is going to provide an overview of the Super Smash Brothers Crew Battle 5 vs 5 format. First things first, what is a crew battle? The crew battle can have crews of up to five players. You can have five players and five substitutes on each roster. The fall open, your matches are going to be best of three battles between the crews. For substitutes, you have a crew of listed fighters that gets locked 24 hours before the match starts. This roster includes your first up fighters for games one, two, and game three, as well as the four fighters that are on the crew that are not the first up fighters. If one of your players is unable to attend, you can use one of your replacements. However, your replacement has to use the fighter that's listed on the roster. I have a link in this slide deck to the crew battle rulebook, and this slide deck is also linked at the end of the video. A uh, quick reminder that the fall open and the spring CIF competition are going to have different formats. So please be sure to check out that video for the overview specific to that format. So first off, within the UGC platform, you're going to set up your crew battle roster. You're going to navigate to clubs and teams. You're going to click on the setting wheel, which is right here at the top. And then if you're on the team page, you can also go to the management page and then settings. Afterward, you're going to fill in the about section where you list a full roster of players. Again, you don't need any player names, just the fighters that they're playing. So your roster can list all up to 10 crews that will be, or players that will be on your crew. And then you will list who you'll be using as your first up during each of the three games. So for example, in the roster that I have listed, game one has a first up of Kirby, and the four players on the roster are Zelda, Mario, Pikachu, and Link. Uh, please note that there are no duplicate fighters allowed on your roster and the first out for each game may not be the same person. So you cannot have two players on your team playing Kirby, nor can you have the first up be the same player in multiple games. This is to do a few things. One, it adds some strategic picking into the format, as well as making sure that everybody gets to play. After you've updated this, go ahead and click Save. I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of what this looks like. First off, you're going to want to log in to the nasif.ugcesports.gg website. I'm gonna go ahead and log in, and on the left side, you're gonna to go to Teams. You're going to go, if you haven't already, create a Smash Brothers team. I have one made here. Um, notice that it's hard to see, but there is a second page that you can navigate to. I'm gonna click on the wheel here, and then I'm going to update my roster here. You can choose your team tag with your school logo. I put CB for crew battles, list my game one roster, and then click save. Each round, your procedure is going to look a little bit like this. Each round, your procedure is going to look a little bit like this. You're going to find your opponent on the UGC page and connect with them via Discord. The home team, which is the top team or the first team listed in the bracket, is going to send a friend code to the away team. The away team is going to send a friend request, everybody accepts, and then the home team will create the arena and invite the opponent to the arena and set the rules up as established in the guidebook. I'm going to go over the rulebook at the end of this video. So we are using a stage striking procedure, which can be done via Discord and probably through voice chat, which is the best way to do this. The home team is going to get the first stage ban, and then you're going to proceed as described in the rulebook. In the second and third games, the winning team will strike two stages, and then the losing team will choose from among the remaining ones. Whoever your first up is going to enter into the arena, and I've got a walkthrough of this. After that first player is eliminated by losing all three stocks, they're out. The team that lost that fighter is going to choose their next player up, and then the next battle is going to begin. However, before anybody takes any actions, the player who is coming back from the winning side has to self-destruct by jumping off the ledge until they have the same stocks they ended the fight with. I'll go over a quick example of this. This is going to continue until one crew is completely eliminated. 
whoever eliminates the opposing team's crew first gets the win. And then game two begins. And the first crew that will win two of these full games is going to win their best of three for the week. Your match settings are as follows. You're going to have anything goes. You're going to set up the rules to be three stock. Make sure that stage hazards are turned off in the settings for the three stock. And all of the rest of these are pretty standard. I want to do a quick recap on what the stage striking protocol looks like for the crew battle. So for this tournament, the home team is going to be the top or higher seated team in the bracket, and the away team is the bottom seated team. Via Discord, the away team is going to strike one of the five starter stages. These five starter stages are Battlefield, Final Destination, Smashville, Pokemon Stadium 2, or Town and City. The away team will strike one of those, the home team will strike two more, and then the away team will strike one more stage, leaving this as the final stage for the group battle. In this example, it will be Battlefield. Now, if you want a quick rundown of how to set up a battle arena, I apologize for the terrible quality on this, but this is the best way to get the images here. You can go into Online Smash, check Battle Arenas. You're going to create the arena, and then set up your formats kind of like this, the three stock seven minutes format, no um, stage hazards. And you can either invite the players directly or share the ID that's going to show up in the top right corner of your screen. It's very small and hard to see here, but it is there and it is a really good one to share with everybody. Now, the way the crew battle works is like this. In, each, in this example, you're going to have the first up for each team. In this example, you have Yoshi versus Falco as the first up for each of the teams. They each start with three stocks and the four people that are coming up next will also have three stocks. Yoshi and Falco are going to fight, and at the end of it, one of those players will be eliminated. In this example, it was Falco. Yoshi lost two stocks. When Yoshi and Marth start their next fight, for example, so Crew 2 decided to send out Marth second, Yoshi is going to start the series off by jumping off the stage twice. In this next example, let's say that Yoshi takes one stock off of Marth, who has two. Yoshi gets eliminated, and then... Crew 1 decides who to send up. In this example, they sent up Mario. Now, Mario and Marth are going to battle, and this process is going to continue until eventually one team remains and the other team is completely knocked out. This team gets the win. After game 1, we add two stages for counter picks in games 2 and 3, if 3 is necessary. The two stages that are added are Kalos, Pokemon League, and Small Battlefield. Now, the winning team from Game 1 is going to strike two stages off the list. The losing team is going to select a stage for this next game. They just get to pick of the five remaining stages. And then the gameplay is going to start with the first ups from Game 2. Again, those first ups are going to be listed on the roster, so it's not like you can choose and counterpick based off of what the other team is sending out. A quick note here that we do expect that teams are on time and ready to play. If you are more than 10 minutes late to the start, then you will forfeit the first game of the set. And if you are 20 minutes late to the start, then you will forfeit your entire set. And teams that forfeit multiple times in a season may be banned from future competitions. We don't want to host a league of forfeits. Uh, within Super Smash Bros, there's some additional rules involving delaying the game, spam taunting, excessive emotes or other poor conduct. So again, it is recommended if you can to be recording the matches or to take screenshots when appropriate. Uh, lastly, I have a link to the slide deck here. And if you have other questions, feel free to reach out either via Discord, office hours, or directly via email. Next, I wanna do a quick deep dive into the rule book because it does get a little bit technical. If you'd like to just look through that on your own, then feel free to stop the video here. But if not, then I'm gonna get into the rulebook just real quick. All of our rulebooks can be found at the nacif.org slash compete CIF California page. The guidebook has all the requirements for participating in the CIF league. And for the fall open, specifically the crew battles, you're going to go to this crew battle rulebook right here. Now this rulebook has all of the technical details of crew battles. And I gotta say, Smash Brothers is one of the most technical competition titles that we're planning on offering. Um, this does have a quick overview. We've got kind of a one page summary of what's going on and what the requirements are. Same with the event timeline here. Main thing to note here is that 
It is best of three, and it should expect to be expected to take between 60 and 90 minutes. Um, we've got information on how we want you to name your teams. Team name, SSBU, Team A, Team B, uh, tech requirements, eligibility, all of that's linked elsewhere. We've got definitions of what a crew is, who your first up is, the tournament, details, double elimination, grand finals, etc. We've got details on how to list your roster out and the rules about each fighter being different. In, anything you need in here that has, uh, if this happens, then this will probably be in this rule book. Um, we do have a mention here about in-person versus remote. This is a title that is best played in person, especially because your crew can rotate through on a singular console. If that's not available, then you're going to have some additional technical requirements with connecting all of your teams into the same lobby and staying in contact with the opposing team. Uh, communication. We want you to start talking to your opponents at least 24 hours. Make sure everybody's on board and everything's set. Send your friend request in advance. Um, one thing that I will note is that the on-demand voice channel feature in the server, the CIF Discord server, is probably one of the best ways to communicate between teams. Uh, you can send a team captain in there and have your coach in there and just communicate about your stage bands and who's up next and all of that in your games. Um, last up, stage rules. It's kind of got a walkthrough on picks and bands. You've got stage selection information, arena setup, rules about match plays, how the crew battle plays out. Um, there's a whole lot of rules about stage timeouts and delays, so make sure you read through these. Um, the big thing to note here is that if the round times out due to time and sudden death begins, then the round ends. Sudden death deaths do not count. The fighter with more stocks remaining is the winner and the other fighter is eliminated. Um, we went back and forth a lot on this rule, but at the end we wanted the matches to be finished in a timely manner. Um, we've got descriptions on how you should identify me fighters. Specifically, if you are using a me fighter, they need to be declared on the roster and have the move set, such as 2313, to show the special moves that they're using. Um, if the move set that's declared does not match the move set being used, and there's evidence of that, then that match is going to be forfeit. Um, fighters have to be unique, and you can't use any controllers or anything that have macros, but you can use Pro Controllers or GameCube controllers as long as you have the adaptions. Uh, we've got rules for stalling, how to determine what happens in the event of self-destruct or sudden death due to time, and tiebreaker protocols in case this happens, what happens if you have absent players, specifically you just play down by their amount of stocks. So if you're missing one player, you're going to play with a four-person crew. And if those four people are eliminated, then they're eliminated. Uh, we've got issues about lag and game crashes, as well as technical information. Uh, one thing to note here, the most technical and difficult part about Smash is making sure that your Switch can connect to the other schools. When you go into your network diagnostics, you have to make sure that you have either a NAT type A or a NAT type B for your network environment. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to connect with the opponents. And that's it for the rulebook. Again, if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, available during office hours, reach out on Discord, and honestly, just email if you have questions. I'm always happy to help. We're looking forward to making this a really awesome season and wish you the best of luck out there in the crew battles.